think that baby Yoda. <laughs> Okay, we'll uh, call to order the Village of Oregon Board for Monday, December 4th, 2023. Ask the Kurt to call the roll. Vashin? Here. Kirchdorfer? Here. Mankey? Here. McDaniel? Here. Peterson? Here. And Van Campen? Here. Uh, item three, approval of November 20th, 2023 Village Board meeting minutes. Looking for a motion to approve. Amanda? And uh, Tom, uh, corrections, changes, etc. Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item four, public appearances, comments, communications, item for discussion, and or possible action. A public comment. This part of the agenda allows members of the public to provide information to the village board, including <coughs> items both on and off the agenda. 15 minutes will be provided for this item with a three minute maximum per speaker. Do we have anyone for public comments tonight? Seeing none, thank you. Item five approval of vouchers in the amount of $1,246,931.02. Looking for a motion to approve. Jason and Carlene. Questions? Seeing none. All those in favor indicate. Oops, Oops sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Beshin? Yes. Mankey? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Van Campen? Yes. And yes. Thank you. Item six, consent agenda. Uh, recommendation motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. Jason? Uh, motion? Yep. Second by Tom. Questions, comments? Lynn, please. I just have one question on the Department Snow and Ice Control yes. Program document. Um, super interesting, very fascinating. Um, <laughs> actually, genuinely very interesting to me. However, I was wondering if we want to put something in that about the SALT-wise uh, winter certification in the strategic plan. We have that public works will be each person will well, be doing that? Yeah, we, we're trying to work into that. Now. Okay. So we've not sent anyone to that yet, but Got I was it. just talking to Martin about it today that we want to try to get myself, Nick, um, two operators and likely our mechanic to at least start that. Um, in fact, we just had a, went to a seminar the other day where they did a presentation on that. So we haven't implemented it yet, but I okay. would like to, well, that'll probably come in 2020, this next year's plan. Perfect. Stuff, but. Thank you. You're welcome. Other comments, questions on the consent agenda items? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, 6D. Excuse me. That's part of the consent. Okay. Item 7. Report of committees. None. Item 8. Unfinished business. Items for discussion and or possible action. Letter of interest from one community bank for $1 million dollars in short-term loan financing for a library construction project. Uh, we t I believe we discussed this uh, at our previous meeting. Mm -hmm. I th this appears to be just the paperwork to get this in order. Looking for a motion to approve. Amanda and Carlene, questions or comments? <coughs> Staff, no. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries, thank you. Item 8B, recruitment and selection process for vacant village trustee. We had a uh, uh, <coughs> carefully drafted uh, document from Martin, and uh, it outlines the steps, which I'll just quickly run through here. Um, we will, using a process of, of appointment by the board, um, the steps would be advertisement of the opening, Second uh, questionnaire was, was developed, w in which we will be reviewing tonight. And then uh, presentation from applicants at a future board meeting. 
and then uh, village board may take nomination and confirmation. So um, I would enter see what items you may might want to discuss on this. <coughs> Are we? Go ahead, Amanda. Yeah. Um, you know, I know we wanted to see the questions because we thought we had a may have had something on there that was. Um, you know, timely at the moment and not anymore, but when I reviewed these, I thought these look pretty good the way they are. I don't know that we need to change anything, but I'm open to listening if somebody had a suggestion. Lynn. Yeah, I agree with Amanda. I'm the one who mentioned the uh, specific question, and I was incorrect in that, so I want to correct my record that um, these were the questions that we had this Spring. Um, I do have a question though about timeline. So if you want me to wait until we decide on the questions, I'm happy to do that before bringing up another topic. Yeah, I, I, that's a good idea. Let, let's get through the question issue first and see if there's any other uh, questions or changes. Carlene. I think we really, you know, we debated this back and forth and we did take out the 249 North Main question last time because it was something that was already in process. I don't see any problem with the questions that are here. Okay. Tom. I guess I would remove the question about how would you identify or respond to a conflict of interest only because it is a statutory thing. I think in responding to that, basically all I really did, I looked at the requires and the rules and I said I'd follow the rules and the requirements. It doesn't really provide relevant information. I have an alternative question that I would submit. But go ahead, Carlene, you wanted to. The only reason I think I would leave that in there is because it was <laughs> a point of concern on this board um, in the time that Amanda, Phil, and I had been on the board and caused some consternation within the board. So just putting it out there up front for people to think about, I think it is. I don't know. It, that's the only reason I could be convinced otherwise, but I, it's part of the reason why we put it in there initially. I don't have a problem with leaving it. I guess the other thing I would like to see a question, I've, I've been involved in developing interview questions before, and I'm a very behavior-based interview uh, kind of question environment, and I guess I would like to see something in, a, in it that the individual articulate the demonstration of being collaborative and jointly solving a problem of defining, uh, basically you'd be asking to explain a time when they had used collaboration and cooperation to come to a difficult decision. Um, I think that's one of the things that's a strength of the current group mm -hmm. yep. is that we have a very collaborative, we disagree on a lot of things, but we, we come and we talk about those things and we work them out. So um, I would like to see them demonstrators to give us an example of time when they had done that. I'd like to include that as a question. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. So it sounds like we, uh, uh, well, first I, I, I wonder if there's consensus about, uh, of adding uh, Tom's question. Uh, Amanda. Can I just suggest that, um, on the first part of the application, we say, you know, why are you interested and why you feel qualified to serve? That's on the first page of this. So we could take out the first question and the second question of this questionnaire and add Tom's in and then keep it on one page. So you're, you're proposing striking which question? The number one and number two are repetitive because they will have filled that out on the first sheet. On the application? Yes, yes. yes. on the okay. application. So we could take out one and two and then we could add Tom's question in there. All right. Does that make sense to everyone? Everyone comfortable with Tom's change? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, any other changes to the question? Sorry? Do you need me to restate the, what the question I would be asking? Uh, uh, that, uh, they said... Uh, it would run something along the lines of describe a time or an occurrence when you had, to, had a difficult decision and had to utilize collaboration and cooperation to come to a final decision. Good. Got it. I yep. said a couple things twice. In yeah. there, but <laughs> we, can, we have we can a good editor over here. Okay. So. Um, okay, so it sounds like we're settled on the questions. Did we address your concern, Carlene? 
Um, we're just going to leave that one in. I mean, yeah. Not strike. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's okay. I, if you're okay with that. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then, uh, Lynn, you had uh, uh, next. Yeah. So, uh, discussion about timeline. Mm -hmm. At the last meeting, we had kind of talked about pushing this to be beyond the holidays. But um, in thinking about that since, I feel like it's only fair and our due diligence to allow anyone who applies to run in the spring. And if we don't, Martin's shaking his head like he understands where I'm going because I'm losing my words here. Um, if, we, if we don't make the decision before January 2nd, that would create a conundrum for somebody who wanted, wanted to, run. to run or wanted to do oh, this appointment. So uh, if, if I, just so I can state, they applied, they weren't uh, chosen or appointed, uh, but then it may be too late for them to run. Yeah, I understand that. Um, uh, well, it seems that, go ahead. Mark. I think the, the, the only issue would be, I think you would have to pick then at the next meeting, which right. would be the 18th. Okay. So that's two weeks from today. Pretty can, short notice. Can yeah. we realistically, right. you know, even get that up and going? Like, could we open it tomorrow or whatever? I um, hate to. Could, uh, um, if we appointed them and they pulled nomination papers, um, they could, uh, they can't withdraw their nomination papers, I take it? By the second, they could. By the second, yeah. I think. Well, that's, that's. Well, they just actually, wouldn't turn in their signatures. You wouldn't have your yeah. board meeting until the 8th. Yeah. 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 That might, yeah, that might cause a change issue. Yeah, so we, that's not a good idea either. Well, I certainly understand your concern, Lynn. Now, go ahead, Carlene. Looks like you had something. Yeah, I was just wondering if there have been a lot of nomination papers pulled. No, there's been there's three been incumbents pulled. Yep. My thought was that if you get more app, more than one application, and we don't choose that application, right, right, right. if that person right. wanted to then run. Hmm. Well, the uh, the other alternative, I guess, then would be not not in, to appoint them until after the first. Is that would that resolve this issue? No, we we'd have to wait till after the election. Well. Well, no, after the election. They just wouldn't have an opportunity. Right, right. Well, uh, alternatively, we could just fast track it and and uh, give it. You know, have it. Would that work? I mean, if we. Yeah, I mean, we could have it out there tomorrow, um, but we would want applications back by next Wednesday, the thirteenth. That leaves about eight days. We wouldn't be able to advertise it in the observer. That's what we wanted to do. Um, so it'd be tight, but it's possible. Mm. Carly? My, I understand what you're saying, and I, I get that piece. And only the incumbents have pulled papers. And there's a very short timeline on being able to get signatures on papers I mean I just I just think there are not people beating down the door to serve in this role well never know I mean I, I can tell that people two people that uh, served on this board um, in the past turned in their nomination papers took them out and turned them in the same day the last day yeah okay. yeah so yeah. Uh, you know I, I think it's too early to speculate Right. I think we had seven people last time. Please. Yeah, I could see something too. Please, go ahead. I think it's also important to remember this is only a one-year one year appointment. Mm -hmm. So if somebody chose, they may want to run for the two-year, and then they could pull mm -hmm. for the two years. Yeah. For the full term. Full, full term. You know, I, 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 I'm leaning. Uh, my thinking is leaning towards is trying to turn this around quickly. And, and the reason I say that is because 
I think that people are that are might be willing to do this are paying pretty close attention and probably going to be uh, quick enough to get out of the gate and get their information in. Mm -hmm. um, Tom and Lynn, you would be people that could speak to that. Do you feel like that's true for was true for you, or that you're aware of a vacancy and that uh, you were able to respond quickly? Or? I think I had when I was heard about this, I was on it very quickly and, yeah. and then was waiting for the process to, right. to you know, kept waiting to see how many more yeah. people would submit names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so um, I would be comfortable with fast tracking it. And I think Lynn's, are, by the way, Lynn's concerns are very good and astute to uh, come to that thought, but uh, I would be comfortable with uh, fast tracking it. Meaning what? At the next meeting? Yes. Would do it? Okay. I'm good with that too. Yeah. What, uh, what if we have a situation where um, an applicant can't come to the interview on the 18th? They have a conflict or something. I believe last time you allowed a video submission. Okay. With yeah. a strict time limit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. Uh, is that a concern that, you know, too short of a time for someone to schedule that? Or? I mean, like, you know, the, they can do a video submission, which we did last time. Yeah. I would also say that if someone misses the deadline, we can always say that there is an open nomination period for mm -hmm. two vacant seats. Right. So there is still that opportunity for them to run truly sure. if they are that interested. Three. There's three. Three, three. sorry. Three. Yeah. <laughs> Three terms that are up there. Sorry. Your seat is up, too. Three as of tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, that's the general consensus uh, that we'll go ahead and, and do the fast track. We came to an, uh, an agreement on the questions. Mm -hmm. yep. Any other issues at hand? You want a motion on that? Probably not. Sure. Yeah. So we need a motion to uh, um, might as well put these together. One is to set the date of the applications. Uh, they need to be turned in by June, uh, June isn't the 13th? Yeah. Noon, so applications are due by noon, December 13th and we're agreeing to the questions as we discuss revisions tonight. Go ahead, Amanda. Um, the only other thing that, that I heard that I would just want to touch on again is you said we wouldn't have time to get it in the observer. Um, is that because of their normal deadlines? Yeah, there's only one paper that's going to be between now and the 13th, and that's okay. in it's two, three gone. days. So that yeah. deadline's already passed. Oh, stuff okay. To can they put it online? Probably. I can ask them. Yeah, we can ask them. Yep. Okay. That was my question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, yeah, like at least try to get it out there as best you can. Um, sure. Because some people get alerts and things mm -hmm. and they'll see yeah. it. I think the last time the majority of people read it through the Facebook yep. notification. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we'll do that too. Mm -hmm. We'll do the e notify, the yep. Facebook. I'll do all those things. Thank you. You didn't have anything <laughs> to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, we're agreeing on the questions and the timeline. Uh, now to make a motion to that effect. Jason, second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you for your help over there. Okay, nine item, uh, excuse me, nine. New business items for discussion and possible action. A, discuss locally imposed limitations and restrictions related to Class A alcohol, beverage, Licenses in the village code. Uh, uh, again, we had a uh, typical uh, good uh, memo from Candy and uh, Martin. A couple of elements here at hand, and I, I won't be looking for a motion right away. I will mention that uh, gentlemen is here from Hive in case there are questions. Um, and um, I look for some initial direction from board members. Questions, comments? I guess just in the general questions, a thousand fifty-six feet seems kind of 
like an odd number? Was there a reason why a thousand fifty six feet? It's is two thousand two or two tenths of a mile. Okay. So it equates to two okay. tenths of a mile. Um, was there an issue in that the bills which sold liquor was less than a thousand feet from hometown pharmacy? What, how was that addressed? Hometown pharmacy didn't have a liquor license. But, but bills did, and it was less than a thousand feet away. It's right. The, it's the prescription, it's, so that you can't have prescription medication sold on the premise of the alcohol license. So that that bills and hometown pharmacy aren't the same. Right. Premise. Two different entities. Yeah. So and the it premise was when, it was when bills. Hy-Vee bought well, hometown pharmacy that. that well, if it, okay, just to, I think I see what you're saying, Tom. They, the, hy V's intention is to get rid of that hy V pharmacy, or I mean the, the hometown pharmacy location and put one in the grocery store right, itself. Right, Okay. I understood that. Okay. okay. So that's the issue. But the geographic limit is between Class A licenses, yes. so alcohol licenses, not pharmacies. Does that make sense? Well, the... I, so there's there's three limit there's three there's limitations three, yeah. on class A <laughs> alcohol licenses in the village. One is a geographic limitation, which is 1,056 feet. So class A licenses can't be within a certain distance from each other, Without with the with some exemptions. Um, and the second limitation is uh, no class A license shall be granted for any premise where prescription medication is sold. So. There's the geographic limitation. There's also this other limitation where you cannot sell prescription medication at the actual place where there's an alcohol license. So that's the issue that we have here uh, this evening, or what prompted this. And then the third limitation is uh, any premises where gasoline is sold uh, cannot sell single servings of fermented malt beverages. So that's the third locally imposed limitation. So those are the three village imposed rules regarding class a licenses jason so am i right to share my thought about this please all right so have to say in terms of the areas of concern that were laid out in the memo um i don't see any reason to hold on to b in the ordinance and um, especially when, in all honesty, you can buy your prescription medication and then drive two-tenths of a mile and buy alcohol. Um, it's a matter of ease and convenience, not a matter of protecting the public from themselves as much, in my mind. And I, I would rather strike B than make a one-case exemption for one um, business because it, it, it uh, seems to be preferential treatment for high V over Walgreens and so let, let's keep things uniform across the village is my initial thought I I don't see what this is this rule is really pre preventing or protecting the public from that would be an uh, immediate danger to <coughs> So essentially, uh, it's, it, it sounds like, Jason, you're saying that you, you would strike provision B uh, regarding uh, prescriptions and alcohol sold on the same premises. Is yes, that correct? Yes, that's correct. Is that a motion? <laughs> it doesn't that, have to be. It, it's not. It, it was my thoughts. All right, thanks. Okay. Uh, Amanda, and I think I saw Carlene's hand. Mm -hmm. No. Amanda? So I appreciate that. Um, I, I think the... Part of the original reason this is in here is there are pharmacy, pharmacy groups that um, have policies where they don't want their pharmacists selling alcohol. That's one thing. They're kind of against that because alcohol and prescription meds are sort of, you know, working against each other, right? Um, and I think this... I see where you're coming from, and I I was thinking maybe we could have an alternate uh, proposal instead if we change B instead of getting rid of it altogether. Okay. And just saying something like, uh, no Class A license shall be granted for any, or not that, um, but something like, I don't know how to word it, but where you can't sell, I know, I get, I'm getting there, the, you can't get the, you can't buy 
alcohol where at the same point of sale where you buy prescription medications. And that would, you know, there's something I'm sure that Hy-Vee could have when they, if, if somebody tried to buy a six pack with their prescription meds, you know, where it would pop up. And the, it gives an opportunity for the pharmacist to say to that person, hey, you know, if, if it's you taking these meds, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be drinking when you take those or like to, or whoever's taking these, just know it, it's a little bit of a, a, a touch point for pharmacists to make sure people are using prescription meds responsibly. And also it makes people make the deliberate decision to purchase alcohol in a separate transaction. They don't have to drive you know, two tenths of a mile or whatever it is, uh, but they they would have to take it to another register, a regular grocery register to check out. And it just makes, it's that extra little bit of making people really buy, if they're gonna buy alcohol, that they're making a deliberate choice to do so as, as a compromise. Who's up? Tom, you're laying in like you might say something. <laughs> um, I guess, my general thought on this is is the more we can streamline and simplify the process, it, it is better for us economically as a as a community to, to here's a, a community where we can come in and do business with, mm -hmm. and more easily get licenses and, and it's not a complex process or a difficulty process because sort of that provision for and the um, element of it. Um, so I, I I would tend to as simplify the process as much as possible in the scenario. We still have all the approval and decision control we have on licenses now so that that wouldn't be able to just come in and be a uh, wide open kind of environment. We'd still have the controls and, and management. It's just sort of a written kind of complexity. Lynn. I guess I'm going to respectfully disagree with that only because Streamlining, I think, is valuable, but in this case, we're talking about the health and safety of our residents, and I like the idea of essentially making it a thoughtful and deliberate process that the village is standing to say that we think that there should be some deliberation and some pause put here. I, I hesitate to make it easy because like you said, we will still have the control, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I want it to be clear if someone reads our ordinances that we're a village that stands for safe usage of these substances. And so I, I just am not sure about the um, efficiency piece. Uh, Phil's going to speak. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm concerned about a, a, a provision where... Uh, they have to take go to one counter and pay for one thing and go to another counter and pay for something else. I think that just is going to end up with frustration for the customers and, and likely the, the employees and staff who are continually ex have to explain, you can pay for this here, but you have to pay for that there. For me, that would be, uh, I wouldn't understand it, and it seems frustrating. Uh, Carlene. So I'm going to agree with Amanda and with Lynn, and I disagree with both you gentlemen. I think, number one, it is, like Amanda said, it needs to be a deliberate and thoughtful act. I am going to get this prescription, and I am also going to buy alcohol, and I'm going to do it at two different counters because it's something I want, and if I want it, then I'm going to do it. Damn the frustration, because I'm going to do it. And I think that it does provide <coughs> the intention on, of the, the person who is purchasing and also the opportunity for the pharmacist to provide some warnings about mixing alcohol and, and, and prescription drugs. I also um, have respectful frustration with Hy-Vee that they didn't know this before they made the decision to to put a, a pharmacy in a place that sells al alcohol. And now we are in a position of needing to change our ordinances to, to make this work for them. And I want it to work. However, I also understand exactly what Lynn is saying and 
concur with her completely that we don't want to just make things efficient so that it doesn't have to be deliberate and thoughtful. So I think that we need to leave that in there because it needs to be deliberate and thoughtful on both counts. Jason. Well, all right then. Um, so my, my continued thought <laughs> is um, honestly, I, 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 I'm all right with the adjustment. Um, I honestly think it's on the consumer to take personal responsibility. Um, and I don't personally, having worked with folks who've struggled with addiction, think that the symbolic stand that we take as a board is going to amount to a hill of beans um, in terms of practically making any difference for anybody who struggles with those issues. Um, as a matter of fact, I think a pharmacist would probably have an easier chance if I came up with a six-pack of beer and had a Z Xanax with me at the same calendar. They go, um, you know about that. Exactly, right? exactly. Versus having to go to a separate counter where you pay your medication, then go to the separate counter to buy your beer. But that's neither here nor there. That's me micromanaging other people. So um, I think so. So, so I, it, it really depends on on the other aspects of the the approval policy working well and really helping. I think make education about substance abuse and awareness important and how to help someone once they realize they have a problem. I think preventing someone who struggles with those issues is probably not going to be very helpful um, and maybe an overreach on our part. Amanda. Uh, thanks for everybody's thoughtful comments on this. Um, I just want to also um, express that there are several pharmacist groups mm -hmm. um, and they have statements on this saying that pharmacists should not be required <coughs> to sell alcohol. So it's not just about policing people and you know that that's a good touch point if people try to do that but mm -hmm. they're like you said there's nothing preventing them from buying their pharmaceuticals and then going to the regular checkout. This also would not force pharmacists to sell alcohol to people. They are categorically against that. It's a terrible idea. Alcohol is not good for your health in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Granted, there are cigarettes and other things that are also not good for your health, but let's just tackle one problem at a time here. <laughs> it's about alcohol licensing. So like, I think that as long as Hy-Vee can put something in place that, you know, maybe, maybe pharmacists can only sell pharmaceuticals at that counter mm -hmm. and can't also, maybe you can't buy groceries there. All grocery, all alcohol goes elsewhere and that's just their policy and people I think would understand that as long as it's posted and they'll, they'll get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, but can I, can I ask to hear from the hy V representative Please. and see if yes. he has, wants to weigh in? If we can state your name for the record, sir. Phil Hoy with hy -V. Thank you for the time this evening and I appreciate the discussion. Um, I would say that alcohol laws are, um, they're very unique and your, your laws and ordinances being the way they are are unique as well. Um, so yes, I agree that it's regrettable that we didn't know about this before we purchased the pharmacy. I'd say we haven't run into a situation where uh, a local ordinance has superseded state or um, or some other uh, regulation. So I would say this is the first time that we ever really ran into this. Uh, we've got several pharmacies and wine and spirit stores within the state of Wisconsin and have not run into this um, before. With regards to the POS uh, issue specifically, um, whether or not the actual physical POS machine can be altered in a way that doesn't allow the sale of alcohol, we can create a store policy um, within the store that doesn't allow, if, if, if that's the direction um, that the board wants to take, we can create a store policy that doesn't allow the pharmacy to sell any alcohol, um, if that's what you'd like to see. So okay. yeah, whatever direction you want to take it, we can, um, we can go either way, if that's what you prefer. So it sounds like that's a, uh, something you can work with then, if, if that's uh, what, 
we should decide tonight. That's correct. Okay. I guess. I, Please. Then, uh, then how would we? <laughs> are, are we doing this as an exception or a revision of policy? I, is you know is the. I, I think it's a change of ordinance, right? Yeah. This is a thing that you want to apply. I mean, if there's a future circumstance where this is a pharmacy and a grocery store, and if you want this applied, then I would say you want it to be in your ordinance. Uh, I think you're up, Miranda. Yeah, so a couple things. Um, first, uh, I forget who, who mentioned it, but someone was saying, you know, we, we still have control over the alcohol policy, and, and, you know, we wouldn't necessarily need the ordinance for that. My concern there is that someone could come to us and we'd deny them and they'd say, well, but on, based on your ordinances, like you're, you're applying it unfairly, like why'd you say yes to me and no to that one? And that's where you get in trouble. So I mean, I like having some rules in place. Um, and I feel like if another store came to town that sold worldly gigs or whatever right. and, <laughs> and uh, you know, and had a pharmacy in it, and sold had a class A license that would or class B even for for or restaurant. beer restaurant whatever class yeah. B is for on premises oh, okay B is okay on premises awesome. sorry so another class A license then um, I think that this is a good way to say we still we still want a little bit of separation we don't want to put pharmacists in the position of selling alcohol um, no matter who they work for. Uh, Jason, yep. and I, I will say I, I can concur with that personally. Um, and there's other municipalities in Wisconsin, and I can think of Janesville, Stoughton, who have separate POSs. If High V is okay with that, separating the POS for uh, for uh, pharmacy sales from from alcohol sales, that that seems like a good compromise. I'd be good with that as well. It's clear, yeah. it, and it'd be consistent going forward. It's something we can apply to future requests. Looks like we're ready for a motion, then. Amanda, do we have so what you need? I assume the motion is to direct uh, staff, staff and attorney <laughs> to draft an ordinance. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> so we can so, do that. We can, have, we can do that and have it ready for, for next, next meeting. meeting. So essentially, you're going to say that uh, no, is it amount to no alcohol sales at the pharmacy register? Is that the gist of it? I think it's it, you can't do any you can't combine farm you can't wouldn't be able to do your pharmacy at the regular checkout you'd have to do it at the pharmacy you can't go to the regular checkout and do alcohol because the regular checkout's going to have groceries and everything else normally so you'd almost have to just say pharmacy is at the pharmacy only is that yeah how would you handle this what we would that? just say that the pharmacy counter does not transact alcohol sales that's what we would do we would limit alcohol sales to the other POS and the other parts of the store and not the pharmacy window. So if I wanted my prescription meds and a bag of chips, I could buy that at the pharmacy. Correct. Could I also buy that at the regular checkout once I pick up my prescription? Or would I have to buy it at the register? I would say most cases you are reviewing that prescription with your pharmacist um, and you are buying that prescription at that window. You are not taking that then to another separate yeah. window and okay. paying for it. So okay. I would say most pharmaceuticals, right. and I would say it's, it is okay. also pretty rare that people are buying alcohol with their pharmacies or other groceries. It might be the case that they're buying chips or something, some other over-the-counter medication at the same time sure. um, or some other a health food item that they want to buy with their prescription, but there's not a lot of other grocery, but it is a convenience piece, something that we want to be able to do, to sell, sell another item to somebody. You know, if you're sure. checking out the pharmacy, you probably don't feel very good, and you're probably sure. not wanting to go around from POS to POS and to complete your transaction and your sale. <laughs> sure. I'm good with that. You got what you need, huh? Yep, we're directing staff. Is there a motion for We have it? a motion from Amanda, <laughs> second by Tom. Any more dis further discussion? And, and for clarification, Please. this is prescription pharmaceuticals, not like over-the-counter Tylenol, things like that, correct? Yep. Yes. That's what I got. Okay. Just uh, one point two. Walgreens was brought up. Um, they would still not be able to get a Class A because of the geographic density requirement, Okay. even with this change. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I caught Peterson, but I didn't catch who's saying um, that. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? 
Hearing that, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the chair votes no. Um, there was a, a, an additional mode in here in the, in the memo about the standard of this uh, 0.2 miles. So certainly we're not obligated to uh, deal with that tonight, but I believe it's going to come up in the future. Do we want to discuss that or move on, deal with that at a later date? That's the density issue, or that? Yeah. Shall we deal with it when it becomes an issue? Or? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think it's going to be an issue around um, vaping sales as well. So I think there we'll talk about density in these kinds of circumstances. Okay. The general agreement. Okay. Thank you. So we'll be in touch. Okay, so it's going yeah. to pass an actual ordinance tonight. No, no. The ordinance okay. will come back for two weeks two on the 18th. Okay. And yeah. does there have to be a public hearing on that, or is it just a no. No, okay? It's just a simple change. approval by the board. Okay. Yeah. So. But I, I think we, we seem to be on the same page. I wouldn't okay. expect that that anything drastic is going to change, but. Okay, it only matters for us in terms of construction and. And moving forward with the actual pharmacy You're not going to so. start selling pharmaceuticals before the next meeting, right? No, we're not. No, but you're going to start remodeling, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in. Uh, let's see here. Where are we? Okay. That's right. uh, item 10, reports of village officers, department heads, and consultants. This is for information only and no action by the village board will be taken to see reports in meeting packet. A, village administrator report in your packet. Any questions or Martin or anything? Hearing none. Item 11, announcements and miscellaneous business. A, announcements, comments, communications, upcoming meetings and events, and miscellaneous business. Village board members may provide brief statements, but no discussion or action of the body may occur. Statements from the village board. Amanda and Lynn. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to give a... Um, get make sure people are aware what the transportation committee um, discussed lately. There's um, been some emails about interim transportation to the new library. Uh, we discussed that at length at the transportation committee um, and uh, there seem to be enough um, things in place for older people, for youth. There's, there's, um, you know, most people have access to the library. Um, we've heard that there are some families who might be struggling to get there, um, and if, uh, but we don't know if they can be helped by outreach services or not. We basically need more data. So I would just say to anybody listening that if you are going to have trouble getting to the new library because it moved a mile out west, then then please contact uh, somebody from the Transportation Committee or contact uh, Laura Shteda at the library or Jennifer Way. Um, they have said they will do everything they can to help you with outreach services. And um, if that isn't good enough, we certainly need to hear about it because if there's a problem, we want to help fix it. But we don't know the extent of the problem. So thanks. Lynn? I just wanted to, well, Along those same lines, make the announcement that the library is closing on December 11th. Um, so if you need to get your books before Christmas, get on over there and then go to the new library in January. <laughs> okay. Carly? I just want to make another plea for folks for the uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Um, we are down to five members, so we need two more and possibly three more as we'd like to have two students if possible. So uh, if you're interested, please apply. 
I think uh, just would add we have also openings on uh, uh, transportation. On transportation. Yeah. transportation committee as sure. well. So if that interests you, please apply. I'll also send that around with the board vacancy details as well. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, next item, uh, Village Board meetings, FYI, for January, rescheduled January 8th and January 22nd due to New Year's Day and Martin Luther King Jr. Day holidays. Item 11B, future agenda items. Anyone? Seeing that. Uh, item 12, adjournment. Uh, Jason and uh, Carlene. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Thank you all very much. We are adjourned.